I am so glad that we get to be today at Clean Recovery Centers. We're actually in the Tampa location here, and it's been great catching up with some of our friends. But the thing that we're noticing in the headlines a lot, we are seeing so much talk about fentanyl, how it is such an epidemic right now, and an overdose is deadly. People don't even realize that they are taking fentanyl. To learn more about this, I'm so excited once again to visit with Shane and also Stephen here. And Stephen, I want to start with you today, talking overall about fentanyl and the problem that you're seeing? Sure. So, uh, you know, I'm a person that has lived experience from fentanyl abuse. You know, I at one point had overdosed twice in a 24 hour period, was revived by the same paramedic crew on that day. And by the grace of God, I'm able to talk about it today, whereas a lot of people don't get the same opportunity. So what we're seeing today here, especially with the patients we serve, a lot of the patients are, you know, not, they're not aware of what they're using. You know, a lot of the substances like Xanax, you know, even the heroin, it's all fentanyl or it's pressed. So they're not really under, understanding what, it, what they're exactly putting in their body. So it's essentially them playing Russian roulette. And you were saying that any time you are getting those opioids, especially, you don't know it's in there. And that's where you hear in the headlines so often that it only takes one time with fentanyl to cause an overdose, which results in death. Yeah, of course. And I think the statistic is 0 0.01 nanograms, which is enough to kill like an army of people. And if to put that into perspective, it's essentially like a speck of salt. And of course, you are seeing this, and that's where you know we're so thankful to be at Clean Recovery Centers right now. And revisiting our conversation, we were able to meet years ago. You started as an IOP facility. Explain what that is and the growth that you've been able to experience over the past few years. Sure, it was. It's great to see you again. Yes, uh, certainly. <laughs> um, yeah, we've been very fortunate. We started six years ago as a tiny IOP with um, a small office and a house, essentially, and. Um, over the years, uh, we've now been able to um, develop all levels of care, um, 100 beds, so we can provide all levels of care from detox right through IOP. Um, because the problem is so bad, um, we are expanding now into Sarasota and Bradenton. So we will have a complete full spectrum of care there as well, 100 beds. So um, again, very, very fortunate. Um, I have this disease as well. Um, so this is very near and dear to my heart um, and the ability to expand and help more people, especially in this horrific opioid epidemic and the, the, the fentanyl situation is, is unbelievable. Um, we're very blessed to be able to, able to help more people. And for people who maybe are not familiar and, and have not experienced it in their family before, kind of give us a, a reason that having all levels of care is so important to that addiction recovery, to this disease's recovery that we see. Sure. So essentially we have a three-phase approach. So detox residential initially um, to get the, the stuff out of your system. That's absolutely imperative, right? Then the next levels of care, day-night treatment or mental health treatment, that's where you start to, to really, that's where the rubber meets the road. Uh, intensive clinical treatment, that's where the reprogramming of the brain, the development of the skills to stay sober. Um, that's essentially the second phase. And then the third phase being IOP, OP. Um, we have IOP living facilities as well. At this point, people are uh, beginning to work. Um, their treatment uh, frequency decreases. They're going to meetings on their own and essentially learning to live life in the real world with the skills necessary to stay sober. And again, I know those three phases so important to recovery and, and I wanna go ahead and one more time talk, you're open about your struggles with fentanyl. What would you share with someone today who's watching or, or someone is loved that is an addict and going through this disease? What message would you like to send to them? Sure, so you know, whenever I was in my active addiction, right, you know, I always wanted the easiest way to get to a place, right? I wasn't willing to put in the work. Until I finally got sober, right? And that was one of the hardest things I ever did. However, I can tell you long-term treatment was the only thing that ever worked for me. Staying throughout the full duration of treatment, through the full continuum of care, detox, residential, PHP, and IOP, I took my time and I did it right. You know, uh, I had failed attempts before in the past, mm -hmm. And that kind of set the tone for me this time to where I finally just was present, able to sit still and take everything in that was offered. And of course, all of those phases that you just discussed, things that happen here at Clean Recovery Center. And Shane, I, I wanna give you the last word. I mean, if people are watching right now who are struggling or love someone who's battling this disease, what message do you like to leave with them? Well, there's a lot of hope out there. We're an in-network facility. 
uh, within, in terms of insurance, that mm -hmm. makes it easier, of course, for uh, people to come here. There's also self-payment. Mm -hmm. um, but anybody that calls in, we will always try to find them a place, whether that be a state-funded facility or something else. Anybody that calls in, we're here 24-7. I like how you just said there is hope out there. I think that's a great one. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing us to come out here to Clean Recovery Centers. As always, you can visit their website, which has been at the bottom of the screen if you know anyone or you're struggling yourself. Also, you can check out our website for even more information as well.